GMO stands for genetically modified organisms. This is often a controversial topic in politics, but in fact, most scientists agree that GMOs have proven useful and safe. The formal definition of genetically modified organisms is this. Organisms in which genetic material has been changed using modern biotechnology, typically directed DNA recombination to create new genes. Mankind, of course, has been breeding plants and animals and changing them for a long time, but now we're doing it with more powerful technology. Modern GMOs were brought to the market in 1995. Now there are over 15 million farmers in 29 different countries growing them. However, the vast majority of GMO crops are grown in the United States, Brazil, and Argentina. In the United States, GMOs account for about 94% of the soy crop, every time you're eating tofu in America, and about 88% of the corn crops. That's because GMOs tend to be easier to grow, cheaper, they are hardier, and they're more capable of producing food more cheaply. 300 million Americans, as well as visitors to this country, have been eating GMO crops for almost 20 years now, and there hasn't been serious evidence of any kind of negative health effect or negative impact on the environment. The three crops where GMOs have had the biggest impact are first soybeans, then cotton, and also corn. Rice would then be next in line. There are also kinds of rice that have additional vitamins, and this helps remedy the lack of nutrients faced in many regions of the developing world. There are also breeds of sorghum and potatoes with greater micronutrients. There are GMO techniques for sugar beets, canola, and papaya. And at least possibly, there might be in the future drought-tolerant cassava, insect-resistant cowpeas, fungus-resistant bananas, virus-resistant sweet potatoes, and higher-yielding pearl millet. Currently, however, we don't know just how successful these additional possibilities for GMOs will be. In any case, the most general notion of GMOs, the notions that humans would breed or somehow alter plants and animals so that they would be more productive, goes far back in human history. If we look at the great civilizations of the New World before Europeans arrived, they were built mainly upon the production and consumption of corn. But corn as we know it was not something that appeared miraculously in nature. It originally came from a kind of weed, and it was improved and made productive and made nutritious by human intervention. This was done by farmers in central Mexico many hundreds of years ago, and these farmers can rightfully go down in history as some of the greatest scientists humanity has produced. On net, GMOs seem to have helped the environment rather than hurt it. This is particularly easy to see in the case of cotton. Very often a lot of pesticide has to be sprayed on cotton plants to keep away the insects, but GMO cotton is hardier and it doesn't require the same dose of pesticides. There is also the prospect of new breeds of crops which require less fertilizer and this could lead to less burden on the environment through, for instance, the runoff of fertilizer into water supplies. In any case, higher yielding GMO crops mean less burden on the supply of land. Sometimes GMOs are called frankenfoods and they're subject to a lot of political opposition, especially coming from Western Europe. There's the sense that somehow mankind is tampering with nature, that we're turning our food over to the ownership or control of corporations, and there's a general reluctance to embrace GMOs as a useful and productive technology. There are a lot of seemingly unfounded fears about GMOs possibly hurting the environment. Many countries in Western Europe have bans or restrictions on GMOs, and this has also meant that African countries are reluctant to embrace GMOs because it would mean closing off European markets for their exports. The result has been that African crops have stayed less productive. Many African nations also have refused food aid in the form of GMOs out of fear that the GMOs will contaminate their native crops and that Europeans will then at some point reject those exports and that market will be shut off. The general scientific consensus has been that this political opposition to GMOs is largely unwarranted. One group that has largely embraced GMOs is the religious order of the Amish in the United States. The Amish are well known for rejecting or refusing to use many branches of modern technology, but they understand that GMO, GMOs improve crop yields and they have done just fine using GMOs. 
For further readings on GMOs, you can Google to these sources, and there is an overview of GMOs in my book, An Economist Gets Lunch.